welcome to a brand new episode of Step Into The Future presented by GE and partnered by Times Network. I'm Tamanna Namdar. Now, with the government successfully electrifying 99% of all houses in India under the Sobhagya scheme, there is an urgent need for a hefty investment in grid transmission infrastructure to keep pace with growing low-cost renewable capacity so that new households can actually afford to buy electricity. With this backdrop, today I'm having a special discussion with experts on modernization of India's grid infrastructure to enable the clean energy transition. Allow me now to introduce my speakers today. Today on the show, I will be speaking with Pitambar Shivnani, MD and CEO of GETND India Limited. YK Segal, Executive Director of Greenco, is joining in on the conversation. And I'm also speaking with Subir Sen, Executive Director, Technology Development at Power Grid. Welcome to all of you and thank you so much for joining us on this special broadcast. Mr. Sen, let me begin by getting you to sort of set the context. Now, in COP26, India has set an ambitious target of achieving 500 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030. And of course, the ultimate energy transition by 2070. How realistic is this target in your view? And what are the challenges we are facing to achieve it? So, uh, if you see the, the target uh, which we have uh, in terms of the install capacity 500 gigawatt has to come from the non-fossil fuel by the year 2030. So presently we have the non-fossil fuel capacity 160 gigawatt plus mainly from the solar, wind, large scale hydro and the nuclear also and uh, more than 60 plus gigawatt capacity of the renewables are under various stages of implementation. This means that today we have already 200 gigawatt plus non-fossil fuel capacity almost in place. So we have to add additional 300 gigawatt in next 7-8 years time frame. And for this already lot of uh, policy initiatives, regulatory frameworks have been done and as far as the planning for integration of this additional 300 megawatt, the planning for 118 uh, gigawatt is already completed, for identified by the uh, renewable energy zone by uh, MNRE as well as the Solar Energy Corporation of India. Then additional 180 gigawatt capacity uh, these have already identified that the potential renewable energy zone, but it has been envisaged that out of 180, around 60 gigawatt will be uh, through the various forms of energy storage, so that the infrastructure requirement can be further optimized as far as the transmission or evacuation infrastructure is concerned. So keeping all these things in view, so we are very much on the right. track to achieve this 500 gigawatt non-fossil fuel capacity into our total installed capacity portfolio by the year 2030, which is uh, achievable. Why don't I return to the portion on the challenges so you know we can keep the conversation flowing as well. And let me bring in uh, Mr. Shivnani over here. So Mr. Shivnani, with its commitment uh, for COP26, now as you know we've been speaking, India needs to reduce its uh, CO2 or greenhouse ga uh, gas emission by 50%. With this huge transmission grid assets that have its own CO2 emissions, how does GE plan to reduce these emissions from transmission assets? GE is strategically focused on energy transition, which results in decarbonization. That is the main focus. If you ask from me, what is decarbonization? Decarbonization means reduction of CO2 emission. In the present situation, G technologies are used in 90% of power transmission utilities and also 40% of digital software is managed by G. Now, coming back to SS6 gas, most of the equipment installed in substations are with SS6 gas 
for last 50 years. We have to replace this SF6 gas which is harmful and G has found an alternative that is G cube technology. The second aspect is in the present conventional substation there is a miles of copper which are running in the substation. G has come up with digital substation which uses fiber optic cable. And the third thing is presently in power transformer mineral oil is used. Now biodegradable oil will be used. So these are the three technologies which will bring decarbonization that is G cube technology, fiber optic cable in digital substation and biodegradable oil. With that we will get a more reliable grid. Fantastic. Uh, you know, Mr. Sen, let me come back now to the point that you were making earlier about the challenges that we face. You said we're well on our track to uh, achieve uh, at least the 500 megawatt um, uh, target that we have. We've heard now of new technologies that are available. But as of today, what are the challenges that you see? Right. If you see the challenges for adding these uh, additional roughly say 350 or gigawatt capacity by the year 2030 in the form of basically major portion will be from the solar and wind capacity. Now the solar and wind uh, they are having the very short gestation period. So they will come in a, say maybe around 18 months, 20 months time frame. However, the transmission infrastructure will be taking say 24 months, 30 months depending upon the terrain involved, depending upon the voltage level, conductor configuration, etc. Therefore, matching uh, development of the transmission or evacuation infrastructure for integrating this variable as well as volatile renewable generation into the grid is a, one of the challenge. Now, second point is the intermittency as well as variability of the solar and wind generation because they are not dependent upon the normal fuel, it depends upon the nature fuel. So until unless uh, we have the very uh, good uh, availability of this kind of output. So maintaining the grid stability and security under every split second is a challenge uh, for uh, integrating this kind of volatile energy resources into the grid. Now to address those things, uh, what we can say is because of to uh, ensure that commensurate development of the grid infrastructure, one part is that uh, we have already identified the renewable energy zone and based upon the renewable energy zones, the transmission infrastructure uh, has been planned and taken up for implementation in a progressive manner. Also, we have identified that there are many locations across the country, especially in the interstate transmission system, where without adding any additional infrastructure, be it the transformers at 400 to 20 kb level or maybe some strengthening. So that may not be required because we have some margin available. So we identified those locations across the country and if the renewables will come at that place, so that can be easily integrated by making their own dedicated line at the 220 kb level, 400 kb level, etc. So this way it has to be challenged. The third, uh, third uh, this uh, uh, aspect is ameliorating the existing infrastructure capacity, uh, the using the new technologies, whether it will be in the digital forms or maybe in the uh, like static compensators and all these things. So uh, even we are doing the reconductoring of the existing transmission corridors where the corridor capacity can be enhanced. So those kind of things are there. As far as that addressing the variability and uncertainty part of the solar and wind, the forecasting of this kind of uh, energy resources is very energy management centers in the various 
renewable resource rich states they are co-located with the existing state load dispatch center and the regional load dispatch center and one at the national load dispatch center so that we can have a good uh, amount of certainty about the availability of this kind of uh, generation output and that will give a very good idea for the operators to schedule it properly because it is co-located also uh, so that we can maintain the demand supply balance in every split second and the grid stability and security part also can be maintained. How is the GE grid enabling absorption of multiple sources of energy into the national grid? And we heard the context that was just placed on you know, some of those challenges. If you see the structure of India, India we have total presently 400 gigawatt of installed capacity. Out of 400 gigawatt of installed power capacity, 160 gigawatt is renewable including hydro. Now the intention is to go to 800 gigawatt of power by 2030 and that will have 500 gigawatt of renewable. In earlier conventional substation were there because there were is playing the major role. They are floating the tariff based competitive bidding for evacuating power from one end to another end and there we are participating actively in order to set up these transmission substations. So that will help. The second point is digital solution and asset health management. This is also critical because we put the fiber optic cable inside the equipment and we are able to monitor the health of equipment and that will have the preventive maintenance which will also help in the life of equipment. We are working towards greener, smarter and most reliable grid in the resilient and speed to work. Um, let me bring in Mr. Y.K. Segal into the conversation. He is Executive Director of Green Co. Mr. Segal, talking about renewable sources which are clean but come with the challenge of uh, being intermittent as their availability varies through the day, for example, solar, wind, etc. Sudden rises and drops in supply to the grid give rise to the challenge, leading to lack of power availabilities. Do you think renewable sources are a feasible solution in the power sector because of these hurdles? See, the point is uh, regarding the variability intermittency, yes, it is in the renewable energy. But now many new energy model has come. Uh, if you see that recent uh, about MNRE also came out with the national hybrid hybrid policy for development of renewable generation as a hybrid projects, and subsequently model which is coming over there. And you must be knowing that uh, Seki uh, recently recently awarded for peak power, and also came out tender with the round the clock power from the renewable. And now the question is when renewable is combined together with any electric storage devices uh, with a certain combination of wind solar or maybe sometime solar alone or maybe sometime wind alone combined together, this energy sources has can provide flexible, dispatchable and schedule power, which is a power on demand, which is a customized. And today discounts are looking for such type of energy solutions. Because if you recall earlier, our you know power sector were more dependent on thermal generation. Because the, the reason for thermal was because we can have availability around the clock of thermal generating station. But the point is the same thing if we are getting from green power while combining wind, solar, and storage, and that to a more competitive price, basically. This is what customer is looking for, and this is what is going to happen tomorrow, basically. All right, Mr. Shivnani. India is a most attractive energy destination today. There's 
no doubt about this with perhaps the correct intervention and investment it can well set the president uh, precedent to become a global clean energy provider in your view uh, what really needs to be done to improve the continuous investments in the renewable sector india is today the most resourceful in terms of renewable today the policies are reverse auction and reverse auction compromises on the quality of equipment environment and safety we need to have the friendly environment where the quality environment and safety is not compromised so that we get the reliable power greener and smarter grid delivering power for 24/7 the second aspect is business friendly environment to establish the ecosystem the third is digital substation and digital software that will also promote this environment let me bring in mr segal once again now mr segal if you look at our neighbors almost every country today is facing what i would call a trilemma when it comes to the future of energy so affordability reliability and sustainability all of these three challenges prevail what has been done by authorities in these sectors to ensure that there are no issues going forward according to you see in regard to affordability reliability and sustainability i will add another fourth factor that is the availability also because all these factors particularly you know every country today have two things one is to meet the growing power demand second aspect is the green power because there are compulsion for green power also appreciating these two aspect regarding the availability reliability and the green power our country has come out with for power for last 3 4 years many new regulatory measures many new policy initiatives as well as you know many new technology adoptions uh, developer has come forward and the agencies like seki they also come out with a very new energy bids in which looking into the requirement of diff different discoms the type of bid has been awarded and just to you know uh, make the project viable the there are many story technologies particularly like uh, uh, of the stream closed loop pump storage projects which give a very competitive price and it is found that with such of electric storage technology joined with ari we can have very affordable and very competitive price and also give a energy solution which is customized which is schedulable dispatchable the way any discom look for well that was indeed a very insightful take on how india is on the path of modernization of its grid infrastructure to enable a clean energy transition Thank you for joining us on this episode of Step into the Future presented by GE and partnered by Times Network. Don't forget to join us for the next episode. Till then, this is Tamanna Inamdar signing off.